Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna to look at something really exciting, and that's this thing. Now, this is the Lenovo ThinkStation P... Oh, uh, I guess, well, we were gonna look at the Lenovo ThinkStation P330 Tiny, but apparently I picked up the Lenovo ThinkStation P320 Tiny, so I guess, um, well, I guess we're just gonna go do that one instead. We have a ton of these units as part of our Project Tiny Mini Micro, series. Now we're going to link that in a card and description so you can go check that out and understand what this entire series is about. But we got about two dozen of these so far, these tiny one liter nodes. And we're going to see what happens if you were to buy them, maybe off lease or something like that, and see if they're still good value as servers, as workstations, just general home lab nodes. All right, so let's go look at the Lenovo ThinkStation P320 Tiny. Now on the front of this machine, you're gonna see something that's pretty standard in terms of IO across the board here. You're gonna see microphone and headphone jacks. You're also gonna see two USB 3.0 ports and they're type A ports. Now something I just wanted to point out about these ports is that Lenovo is using black USB 3 ports instead of using blue. And if you look at something like the Dell Optiplex line, they're using blue USB 3 ports. The old HPs used to use those, but the newer ones are now using black. And I think it just makes it a lot easier for a consumer to tell the difference between a USB 3 and a USB 2 port. However, I get it. Maybe all the ports are now gonna be USB 3 going forward, so maybe we don't need that anymore. But I still think it's valuable just because consumers are so used to seeing USB 3 ports in blue that you know they did that instead of just trying to match their brand colors. Moving to the back of the system, you can see that there is something different. You get the standard Lenovo kind of rectangular power brick DC input, but then you also get two DisplayPort outputs, which is kind of nice, or full-size DisplayPort outputs. Now there are a total of four USB ports all lining the bottom of the system, and those are USB 3.0 ports as well. And so it's just something to keep in mind that yes, you do get actually a total of six externally available USB 3 ports. You'll see the one gig ethernet adapter, and then just above that, you're gonna see something that's very different from a lot of the systems that we've tested before, and that is a array of four mini DisplayPort outputs. And so, well, you might be wondering, what the heck is going on with this thing? So when you open up the system, something that you're gonna notice real fast, and I noticed right away, was that Lenovo actually has a different design for this, where they don't just have a simple thumb screw that is retained in the system and on the in the actual shell of the system itself. It actually just has kind of a standard screw. And so you pull it out and it actually comes all the way out of the system. It doesn't seem like a big touch, but it's not a thumb screw. You need a screwdriver and it you know, can get lost. So that's just not really a big deal, but it is just a difference with this system versus some of the Dell and HP systems that we've seen before. But in terms of what's going on inside, there's a lot going on in here. So driving those four mini display port outputs, you actually have an NVIDIA Quadro P600 in this generation, P600 GPU. And that actually sits in a PCIe by 16 slot. It's an NVIDIA card and you know, it's there. Sitting next to that GPU is the CPU. And in this case, it's a Intel Core i7-7700, which is four core eight thread processor. This is just before we saw the jump to, you know, higher thread counts. And so it's still four core eight thread. Like a lot of the other systems that we've seen, this is still only a single fan unit. So it's relatively quiet actually when you have it out there and you're not running things under load. Now, when you do load it up, that fan spins a lot and it is you know, quite noisy, but it's just something to keep in mind that it's actually not too bad because you have like a 35 watt TDP processor, you have a 40 watt TDP GPU. And so you just don't really have, I mean, that's not even as much as a Xeon scalable low end processor in this entire box. So it's actually not too bad. Something else that you're gonna notice that's really interesting is that you can remove the GPU. Now the GPU of course has the heat piping to put its thermal solution in line with that fan. And that's really important because that's what keeps this whole thing cool. So if you do put something different into that PCIe slot, you have to be aware of a couple things. One, you have clearance issues and number two, you have to worry about cooling. So you can't put like a 75 watt Nvidia Tesla T4 in here because it will just burn up and it's a bad idea. The other thing that's a little different about this is that, well, it's a lot harder to service underneath that GPU. I mean, there's a whole bunch of screws. Now, most of these systems in this class are toolless designs. So, or at least majority of the servicing can be done toolless. And this is a big difference. I mean, to remove that GPU, there's several screws, they're different sizes even. And so it's not necessarily the easiest replacement that you're gonna have. Plus you have to go undo the thermal solution. I mean, there's a lot to do there. And so in general, I wouldn't even tell you to go do it. 
The one thing that you might want to service that's under that GPU is actually there is an M2 slot and under there is where the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chipset is. Our particular unit came with an Intel chipset, but if your unit doesn't come with Wi-Fi, you have to go under that GPU, which is going to take a little bit of time. My advice is just make sure that you get a unit with Wi-Fi if that's a feature that you want and just have somebody else do it because it's just going to, it's just not hard, but it just takes another minute or two and why spend the effort? If you're getting a great deal, okay, sure, why not? But if you're not, it's not worth it. Something that is kind of cool on this unit is that in a lot of the other units, you'd actually have a little fan that you'd have to lift up and the SODIMs would be under there and then you had to move move the two and a half inch drive. And so once you got under there, you could go to get the you know NVMe SSDs and all that kind of stuff. But because this thing has the GPU and it's not really a serviceable, what Lenovo has, which is kind of cool, is that you just kind of push this little, once you get it open, you just kind of pull this little latch out and boom, underneath here, you have everything that you need to service. I mean, there are two SO DIMM slots, so you can put DDR4 SO DIMMs in there. Our unit came with eight gigs and a single channel configuration, but you could easily go up to say two 16 gig DIMMs. So just keep that in mind. And they're not super expensive because they're just, well, really easy to get on the open market at this point. So just something to keep in mind. And then the other thing that's really kind of cool is that you actually have dual NVMe slots and they're right here on the bottom. So you don't have to go remove a drive now. So the other thing that's kind of cool about this is because you have two NVMe slots here, that's a big differentiator. Now, most of the systems that we see really only have one functioning NVMe slot. Sometimes there is a second one, but it's not functional. And so this one, actually, you can put two NVMe SSDs. So kind of, if you think about it, the standard model in this range is really like a two and a half inch drive, which is usually a SATA drive, plus you get one NVMe slot. And so this is something that's really different. It's different than a lot of the other models that are out there. And so not only does it have a GPU, but also has a different storage configuration. Let's talk power consumption real quick. So on the power side, this thing uses a lot more power at idle. I mean, we're actually pretty surprised that this one was pulling well over 20 watts. In fact, it was a lot of times over 22 to 24 watts in the 25 watt range. So I think 22 to 25 would probably be the idle range that I would give you as a guidance. And that's actually pretty significant. I and mean, most of the other units that we're seeing are really in the maybe nine to 12 watt range. So that's basically double. Of course, to be fair, that's because, well, there's a GPU in here and it's a higher end box. So I guess that makes sense, but it is a higher idle power consumption. Now on the max power consumption, we also see extension of the range. So most of the units that we've tested so far, most of them, the tiny mini micro, just this kind of just segment are generally using 65 watt power supplies, but this unit doesn't. It's a much larger power supply because we're actually seeing power consumption into a little over 90 watt range on kind of the high end. Again, this is because you have more hardware in here. So I guess it makes sense. But just if you're thinking like, oh, these things are all that low power consumption, this is not. It also means it has a larger power brick. And so that's something to keep in mind as well. But on the other hand, you do get some decent performance. So you have a couple things that you don't have in normal systems. Now, first, you know, we have the Core i7 7700T. Now, it's a 35 watt TDP, four core, eight thread processor. It's actually pretty fast for a 35 watt part, but you're still TDP limited. So it's never going to really hit the kind of high end of the Xeon E3, well, maybe the Xeon E2100, 2200 series where you have four core threads because those just have higher TDPs that they can hit. And so you have more thermal headroom and therefore, yeah, you obviously are gonna be able to get a faster chip if you have more thermal headroom. But still, you know, we're talking about something that would be extremely competitive versus, you know, six core and even larger, sometimes eight core, Xeon D offerings, so that's pretty good. One thing to note though, is that in the next generation, so this is the seven series, when you get to the eight series of the core, Intel core line, you start getting into start seeing things like six cores. And so you just get that kind of core bump and because you get a core bump, you actually get a lot more performance in those kind of newer parts. So this is kind of like the last hurrah for the quad core eight thread parts in terms of being like high end at least. The other thing is that you do have an NVIDIA GPU. Now these GPUs are specifically designed really for things like displaying multiple monitor outputs. So if you think about it, like you're a trader or something like that, where you just need to have a whole bunch of monitors, then this is a good solution. And by the way, if you have say a shop or something like that, where you need some kind of digital signage solution, this is actually kind of cool because you get a lot of different outputs, but this is also a Pascal generation GPU. So you have two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. You do have Pascal compute core, so you can run CUDA on this thing. 
And that's not necessarily fast. I mean, I wouldn't use this as a training machine, but if you just needed a little bit of edge inferencing, you want an x86 platform, and you didn't want to go find some kind of ARM platform like a Jetson or something like that, well, this is not too bad. It's not going to be the best. I mean, there are a lot better platforms. Let's be very clear that there are a lot better edge inferencing platforms, but this is pretty cheap. And if you just want to prototype something, maybe this is worth looking at. Another really good use case is if you have to do video transcoding or something like that, and the NVIDIA Quadro P600 will let you go look up the specs on that. But if that fits what you need, then you know this actually does have that offload. Plus, you also have the Intel GPU, so you do have QuickSync available. So pricing is a little bit strange with this because we're buying a lot of these things used and we're getting coupons, we're looking on eBay, and we're looking all over for these things just to get them kind of reasonably inexpensive, but at the same time getting a wide diversity of these systems because we're only buying one or two just to be able to test them. So this unit, I think we purchased for a little over $500, maybe like 505. I think we spent maybe about $90 more-ish to get the P330, so the next generation of this system. And that just kind of gives you a generational idea in terms of, well, maybe you don't necessarily need all the performance of the next gen, you can save about a hundred bucks. So it's about 20% more to upgrade to the newer generation. Now, on one hand, you could say, well, this is a lot more expensive than some of the other nodes that you're looking at. But on the other hand, you, know, you get a GPU in it, which is different. And if you were to get really crafty and maybe you know, you wanted to go and 3D print something, you could probably make a bracket and put a 10 gig ethernet adapter in here as well. One other little feature that I do want to mention before we get too far and wrap this thing up is that this actually has Intel vPro. vPro is important because it gives you some of the remote management functionality. You can do remote media, you can do remote KVM, you can do remote power cycling. A lot of the features that are kind of the basic IPMI tool set that you would get in a normal server. And you don't necessarily get all of the same monitoring tools. You don't get all the Redfish stuff. I mean, you don't get all of the stuff that you get with the server, but you know, if you just have like one system and that's how you want to manage it, or maybe a small cluster systems, you're just going to manage it using this tool set, the vPro tool set, instead of a traditional server tool set, then I guess it works fine. With all of these videos, what we want to do is we want to talk about what are the key items that are different about this versus other system? What do we learn from buying the system? And it's a little weird because I was reflecting on this for the P330, but here we are with the P320. And so we're going to talk about the P320 Tiny's lesson learned. I guess my key lesson learned here is that this is a step up in cost. It's over $500, but you do get things like the PCIe slot, you do get the GPU, you get the dual NVMe slot. So you do get a differentiated feature set. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit higher end, well, there are options and it isn't crazy expensive. I mean, this thing is like a little, we got it for a little over $500, which is expensive, but it's not necessarily, you know, we're not paying thousands of dollars for this device. It's only a little bit more and it's still in that same compact, small form factor. And so that works pretty well. Now, the one other side to it is, of course, it is compact, but you do have a bigger power brick. So there's that as well. Hey guys, I hope you like this look at the Lenovo ThinkStation P320 Tiny. Now we are gonna have the P330 Tiny later on and we'll probably wait a little bit for that because we're gonna do some other units in between. But we wanted to just kind of show you what you can get. And because this is an option, it addresses a lot of the comments that we've gotten, a lot of the questions that we've gotten. So I wanted to get something like this out just so you can kind of see that there are options out there that are a little different. And hey, if you made it this far, why don't you click subscribe Turn on those notifications so you can see the next time we come out with videos. We have like over 20 of these units, so there's going to be a whole series on this. You can also check out the STH main site. We have new content every day. We also will have a link in the description for kind of more details on this system so you can kind of get into the nitty gritties about chipsets and stuff like that. So you can go look at that. Again, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.